Hi everyone, welcome to a special holiday themed video. Today is the last day of the Jewish festival of Hanukkah, and of course later this month is Christmas. So I thought I'd do a family tree related to these two holidays. One of the main characters in the Hanukkah story is a fellow named Judas Maccabeus, and one of the characters in the Christmas story is King Herod. Something you may not know is that there is actually a family tree connection between these two historical figures. So that's what we're going to look at today. We'll start with the Maccabees. In the 2nd century BCE, Judea was being fought over between the two main powers in the Hellenistic world, the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt and the Seleucid Empire. In the year 167, the Seleucid Emperor Antiochus IV captured Jerusalem and looted the Jewish temple. He outlawed Judaism and planned to build an altar to Zeus instead. This resulted in a major revolt by the Jews, led by Metathias and his five sons, commonly known as the Maccabees. Now actually only one of the sons, Judas, was actually named Maccabeus. Maccabee means the hammer, and it was simply a nickname given to Judas. But over the centuries, the name came to refer to all of the brothers. The correct name for the dynasty is actually Hasmonean. This name comes from their ancestor, Asmonius. But let's get back to the revolt. Metathius died in 166, and Judas replaced him as the leader of the Jews. Under Judas Maccabeus, the Jewish revolt was successful and Judea became semi-independent. Today, the festival of Hanukkah still celebrates the restoration of the temple by the Maccabees and a miracle that was said to have occurred involving oil and lights. After Judas, the leadership passed to his brother Jonathan and then to his brother Simon. Simon was the first to take the title Prince of Judea. He was followed by his son, John Hyrcanus. And it was during the reign of John Hyrcanus that the region became truly independent. When his son, Aristobulus, inherited the throne, he decided to use the title king. So we now have a kingdom of Judea. And I should point out that these Hasmoneans were both secular rulers as well as high priests of the Jewish religion. Aristobulus I was followed by his brother, Alexander Genius, who was in turn followed by his wife, Queen Salome Alexandra. So she went from being a queen consort to being a reigning queen. She was followed by her son, Hyrcanus II. But these two brothers went to war, and the younger brother ended up winning and becoming king. He became King Aristobulus II. But just when their conflict was about to begin again, the Romans arrived on the scene, led by the great general Pompey. The Romans captured Jerusalem in 63 BCE and made Judea a Roman province, with Hyrcanus II being reinstalled as ruler and high priest, but no longer king. There was a brief period when the Parthians took over and made this individual their puppet king for a few years. And when this happened, Herod, who was a Judean governor loyal to Hyrcanus, went to Rome to get help. In a surprise move, the Romans appointed Herod king of the Jews and sent him back with an army to recapture Jerusalem. In 37 BCE, Herod was successful. So in that year, the Herodian dynasty officially replaced the Hasmonean dynasty. But remember, by this point, Judea was a Roman province, so it really wasn't an independent kingdom anymore. In order to legitimize his rule, Herod married a Hasmonean princess, and it's this marriage that provides a link between the two dynasties. He had several other wives, though, and had children with them as well. One of the things Herod the Great is most known for is doing a major restoration of the temple in Jerusalem. And that's why the temple of that period is known as the Herodian Temple. Herod the Great reigned until 4 BCE, which is the year that most scholars believe that Jesus was born. Now, according to the Christmas story, three wise men from the east came looking for Jesus and wound up in Herod's court. The story goes that when Herod heard that a new king of the Jews had been born, he ordered that all male babies two years or younger be killed. 
Now, there is no historical evidence that this massacre ever took place, but according to the New Testament, Jesus and his family fled to Egypt to escape it. But King Herod died around the same time that Jesus was born. So the Herod that is mentioned later in the New Testament, when Jesus dies, is actually a different Herod. You see, after the death of Herod the Great, Judea was divided into a tetrarchy, which means it was ruled by four people instead of a single king. Three of the tetrarchs were his sons and the other was his sister. This individual here is the Herod mentioned at the time of Jesus' death. But Herod is also mentioned in the book of Acts, and this gets pretty confusing because the Herod mentioned in the book of Acts is a third Herod, this Herod here, also known as Agrippa I. He became king of all Judea for a brief period in the 40s. His son Agrippa II was the last of the Herodians to rule. He too is mentioned in the book of Acts simply as Agrippa. In the year 66, the first Roman Jewish war began, which eventually resulted in the complete destruction of the temple in Jerusalem. After that, there would be no more king in Jerusalem until the time of the Crusaders. So that was a quick look at the Hasmonean and Herodian dynasties. What you've seen here today is actually just a small part of a much larger chart that I am currently working on, which will cover all the major dynasties of the ancient world. Keep an eye out for that in 2019. Happy holidays and thanks for watching.